Okay, uh, we've roughed out this bore here. We've got the center, center drill, the center, so we're supporting here, and we're parting off this uh, this ring here. Uh, we're going to duplicate, and we got to make another one of these. On the removal process, uh, uh, this one got uh, tweaked a little. Uh, this is kind of my homemade uh, thread and insert tool here uh, and this is just a bar and then I relieved it for a chip and kind of be square uh, center line with the bar left enough surface right here and this is just a regular threading insert silver solder to the bar itself now I'm just setting up so that my tool bit is square or in line with how it's supposed to be uh, square to the part and not leading one way or, or trailing the other way. So I take my fishtail and I run it against the surface, flat surface here. And uh, the best way to me, for me is go ahead and get the flashlight right underneath. There and make sure that those two surfaces are 100% in contact and then you know that your 60 degree angle is set up straight in line with your bore. Alright, now we're ready to cut some ID threads. Okay, I've already made a single pass, uh, just barely skimming so I could verify the threads per inch. I'm set up at zero on my, uh, my uh, dashboard gauge here, which I like to have. Now I'm going to be turning these threads on the back side of the bore and and I'm going to be turning it in reverse and feeding out. And I, this comes into a lot of circumstances. Let's say you have internal uh, threads and you have a relief back in the back side that you can always start in and come out. Sometimes it's a lot easier to start at a zero known in there and adjust and come on in instead of feeding from the outside in and trying to stop in such a tight spot. Uh, so this this is kind of my little tip on, on threading on the reverse side and we're going to pretend that we have a little relief back there and we're going to set into that position as we go spring cuts just to get a gloss finish. Now this is going to be cut and split and uh, we're just making sure that we got 
a good diameter there and I'm pretty sure it should screw on there uh, because it'll always have it's not bad to cut them to five thousandths large or so because you get, you got the split and you can draw it tight you can tighten this this is a clamping nut so uh, shoot for the higher side so that you don't have interference Go make some shape on the nut there. All right, I've thrown the uh, rotary table up here on the uh, Bridgeport mill, and I'm using a turbo end mill. And I laid this ring on, and this ring lines right up with the eye. Eyeballed this right to a line on the table. Um, I was almost going to go in and torch cut this outside off, but I didn't want the heat. I didn't know how much distortion it was going to cause on the threads. So I decided, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit more work and, and a couple passes around, a couple moving of these clamps here, flipping the part over and coming in on the other side. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll just whittle at it. It's not real accurate. And this is kind of how I'm going to get rid of all that material except for that ear where the bolt's going to go through. We've had this on the stove for a while. We just stoked up the wood. Okay, we got 300 degrees here, so we're 300 plus all around the edge, pretty even. We know we're up and down. 
put this part down because it takes both hands to snap this real fast. Okay. And we can get a measurement on that bore while it's sitting there hot. And we've been measuring it and we've, time and time again, we've come up with four inches, uh, nine thousandths. Now the shaft is four inches, four thousandths. So we are four thousandths larger than where it's going to actually rest on. Um, we've, we've been heating our, our supports. We're going to put the supports on the can first, set this on top of the can, and then we're going to slip the shaft right into it. That's the plan. Almost feel like I need a drum roll for this bad boy. feel lucky. <laughs> well, well, do you? Man, you don't have time. You don't have time. That thing is grabbed already. I feel lucky. All right, we flipped it around so you get to see it this way here. I mean, pretty much, you know, this is, this is about what you're going to see. I don't think I'll get down to the truck to actually see it in place or anything. Uh, might get a picture of the truck later on, but it, it may, you know, you know what I did. Uh, this is, uh, they're going to put speedy sleeves on here for the seals. And of course, um, the shaft is in place. So the seal kit or the speedy sleeve came. This is solid. And I just chucked this up in a lathe and tree panned out that there so that they can assemble it. Now they can keep this tool on here to change out the uh, sleeve, uh, speedy sleeves uh, when they need to. And the nut, I'll probably uh, loan them a, a wedge here so that they can spin it on and lock down their bearings. But I'm going to put it on here to protect the threads. Just that machining that slot relieved that made lets it come in and grab it so it's not bad I'd rather have it that way at least I know that you can you can be able to tighten that up get her done <laughs> 